Welcome everybody to Rob's Metalworks tonight. We have returned to high tones, yes, to support one of my favorite fucking bands of 2021. Brings me great pleasure to welcome the Satanic Magic Attack of Portland's Bewitcher, and I have with me the main man, Matt of the band, sir. What an honor to have you on our show. Thanks for having me, man. It's good to be back in San Antonio. <laughs> yeah, I think the last the last time you were here, I was at your show uh, in October 29th, the end of October, close to Halloween, I yeah, think. Yeah, man, with Exhumed and uh, the whole and, the whole gang. And uh, yeah, Enforced, the Creeping Death. Yeah, dude. Killer show, dude. Dude, I'm kind of giddy because I'm just a big fan, and I was a big fan even back in October, and I remember I had just gotten the record. And a little bit before that gig, and if I would have gotten it maybe like two weeks before, we would have interviewed back then. <laughs> okay, but now I'm even more of a fan. So there's going to be so many people out there who are learning about Bewitcher as you guys continue to do all this road work that you've been doing. So for those people who are new for the band, share a little bit about the beginnings of, of Bewitcher. Because uh, even though you guys are almost coming up on your 10 year anniversary, right? Oh, man, that's crazy to think about, but you're right about that. Yeah, tell us a little bit about the beginnings of, of, of the band in Portland. Uh, well, the band started in 2013. It was just me and uh, Andy, our bass player. And uh, you know, it was an idea that I had uh, kind of at the end of a band that we were t in together. Um, it was kind of falling apart. So I had this idea because I wanted to do, you know, I was getting into, you know, back into like Venom and Bathory and Motorhead and a lot of these bands that I loved as a kid. You yeah. Know, like, wanted to do something that like was, um, it was kind of the band that I wanted to be in when I was like 15 years old, right? Like it's it's evil, it's fast, and it's just like heavy as hell, you know? It's like, <laughs> and just, and just, it just rips, you know? And that, that was the whole point. So, um, you know, we kind of just did some demos. We just started start writing some, writing some songs and uh, things kind of came together on some demos that we did put out the tapes and people bought them and they were into it and it just kind of kept on going from there um were you guys always a three-piece band we started off as a two-piece and then we the, the idea is that if we were ever going to play live the plan was to only be a three-piece we we're going to get a drummer and then we we're just going to do it with the three of us like shit's so much easier with three people instead of five it is man, for sure <laughs> <laughs> for sure right yeah dude uh, th that wasn't even the motivation it was just because we wanted to be like you know all the other bands that we were trying to emulated at the time so that yeah. was a three piece yeah. motor has a three piece you know yeah. like, that, that was Celtic Frost and you know, go on and on with the list but like yeah that was the plan dude and even as a three piece you guys are so fucking tight man I love to see you guys Thanks, play dude. perform live because you guys can pull it off uh, you know when I first started learning about the band and when people kind of see the press and stuff, they they they, they uh, I, I see things like black metal and speed metal. And I remember I always kind of felt I've I've felt this way for the past year. I said, you know, to me, Bewitcher is way more than a black metal band. You know, because when I think about black metal, I think about like da -da 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 and, and speedy. And your vocal is definitely a black metal vocal, I think. But you guys are just so like also melodic and, and the, the solos that you do, bro, like super bluesy, and I love that shit. And that's, I think to me, that w that's what makes Bewitcher so special. So now that people are coming on to the band, do you still tell people you're black metal, or what do you tell people? We never told people that we were black metal. Oh, okay. So, yeah, Was that we the were, label? <laughs> uh, I think that's just what people thought of. I mean, I think there's a lot of things that there's a lot of uh, elements of yeah. black metal that go into yeah. what we do. But like, so obviously, like the 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 lyrical themes, you know, the satanic stuff, the yeah. witchcraft, and all that kind of stuff. I mean, you definitely get a lot of little black metal from that. Sure, the sure. Vocal style, like you mentioned. Um, but I would say musically, we've always been more heavy metal than anything else. Yeah, right? yeah. So like. I think with this album, this no, most recent one, it, it just was uh, about bringing out those influences a little bit more and just being a more of a, taking it from more of a rock and roll perspective, you know, and and, and uh, bringing out those sides of the band um, as much as possible. And I, I don't worry about labels. I don't worry about if we're black metal enough or this, that, and the other. <laughs> like, we're just doing what we do, and that's that's enough for us, you know. You, you talked and you quickly uh, alluded to uh, your latest record, uh, Curse Be That Kingdom. We're going to talk a little bit about that uh, in a bit. But uh, I remember uh, this was the first record that I, that I heard, 
And then when I realized how, how awesome you guys were, I'm like, okay, now I got to go back and, and get the other shit. So I got uh, the debut, which came out in 2016, uh, the self-titled debut, Bewitcher. Yep. And then in 2019, you guys released uh, Under the Witching Cross. That's correct. Under the Witching Cross. And so I started consuming those records and I'm like, man, yeah, this is what they've always been doing. Um, Yet, you know, obviously the production is way better on the new record. Um, so talk a little bit about how you kind of feel the band has evolved since the debut. I mean, we're talking already like, oof, it's, it's been getting on there, six man. years man, now <laughs> it's already. Getting, it's getting to be a long time. Yeah, six years. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy to think about. I mean, the pandemic obviously took, took a chunk of time out of our lives, you know, so like it, it kind of just blacked out two years or whatever. But like, yeah, it's crazy that it's six years since the first album already so. yeah how do you kind of feel you you guys have grown a little bit since that time obviously all the road work you've done has paid off yeah i mean and we, you know, we've picked up probably a little bit from the bands that we've toured with and stuff here and there um i would say that just in general like we've always had the same set of influences from when we started we didn't always do the same thing on the first record versus what we're doing now but it that stuff was always there it was just in the background and so we're just kind of pushing things around a little bit you know moving things uh back and forth to kind of showcase what we're like into what we're influenced by and what makes the band tick so if there wasn't as much like diamond head or like judas priest influence on the first record well there's a little bit more of that now on this yeah one, you know yeah I mean? and i see your your thin lizzy button here yes oh, fuck you phil line it yeah fuck yeah man. fuck yeah dude i mean <laughs> oh god you know and that's i think that's what i love so much about this band i mean i love your playing and i love just the big choruses in the music but yet it's like we're getting this melodic rock, but it's fucking evil and hedonistic yeah. and satanic. Yeah. And you guys are pretty evil fucking dudes. I remember I was telling my, my guy right now, I said, I said, you know what? These guys are like so scary in the fucking videos. <laughs> and then when you meet them, they're like the nicest guys ever. Uh, well, I mean. <laughs> oh, you're not that nice. I think it's all about, uh, you know, just it, it's, it's all about the um, the spirit of the music, you know, where it's coming from. Right. And, you know, we're, 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 we're human beings, man. <laughs> we're not, like, <laughs> sacrificing chickens in the van and shit, you know. It's like, fuck. Oh, you know, if you wanted to do that, hey. I think that's cool hey. with me. You know? There are some <laughs> fucking crazy people out there that might think so, though. Damn right. It's all right. <laughs> uh, Cursed Be Thy Kingdom came out last April. It's yeah. almost been a year now. Yeah, it has. Uh, God, and I it's been it's a greatly acclaimed. I think it's been over a year now because it was the 16th, yep, yep, right? April 16th. Yeah. Uh, greatly acclaimed record. You guys hit some Billboard stuff. I think the New Rock number forty. Fucking is that a fact? Yeah. Uh, what? I got it right here somewhere. What? Yeah, it's it's a fact. You I guys. heard about Germany charting. I didn't. <laughs> yeah, Germany it. charting too. Oh, yeah. Seventy six yeah. on in Germany. Yeah, man. Out of one hundred. Very cool. And then I think the New Rock was forty. Yep, new rock, uh, current hard rock forty, new artist forty eight. You just broke news to me, man. Wow. Woo. Yeah, it's 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 Not out bad. there. Great. Um, so, uh, how do you kind of feel about the reception for this record? Obviously, I kind of feel too like Bewitchers on on some huge momentum right now. That seems to be the perception for us. I don't think that we ever like <laughs> think about that stuff. Like we're just kind of like, well, okay, next tour, let's go. Uh, People are like, man, you guys got all this going on, and I'm like. I yeah, man, we're just doing what we always do. We just hit the road and we just play shows. That's what we do. But I think, too, like the, the fact that people are wanting to see Bewitcher, you guys are going to, you know, easily getting booked for these new tours. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit about what you have coming up this summer. But it seems like because of the momentum that there seems to be more opportunities opening up. You guys are staying busy. For sure. Yes. And that's the cool thing about uh, what we're doing now versus maybe like three years ago where like you definitely see an uptick in like the audience, like attendance and everything else yeah, for so sure. that's cool and uh yeah and merch people, sales and people know the songs and shit like they know the lyrics that's that's a very cool thing you know that's a it's a very heavy thing to like process <laughs> when people are like <laughs> actually like into your stuff that much and like you know yeah it's 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 it's, it's cool but we're rolling with it and just yeah whatever happens, happens. i love all the cool merch you guys got too yeah cool I think, shirts uh, and vinyl and patches one of those solid merch games in the in the Fuck business yeah you know? dude that's great that's great and and you know when you see the merch sales pick up it's like you know people are coming on board and, and fucking supporting and, and promoting uh bewitcher in, in so many subtle ways it's a beautiful thing it's cool to see man it's cool yeah, to see it's cool to see yeah. uh and I, I love to see that happening for you guys because I'm such a huge fan. Uh, Cursed Be Thy Kingdom 
as I kind of alluded to a little while ago, is I, I feel obviously is your best sounding record. Uh, talk a little bit about um, the recording for the record. Did y'all do it in Portland, and, and who did you work with on that? No, uh, we went down back down to Ventura, California, with uh, Armand from uh, from Night Demon. Um, we did ah. the Rich, Witching Cross record with him as well. Um, different guy mixing it this time around, so it sounds a bit different because of that. So Witching Cross was done by Joel Grind. Um, this one was done by Cameron Webb, uh, who is famous for you know mixing Motorheads, do, producing all of his all, all of their records from 2006 on. I think. Worked with Megadeth, worked with some bigger bands, so um, definitely gave us a little more of a, I guess like a like a, I don't like to say polished vibe, but like it it, it definitely cleaned things up a little bit, you know. And we were going for like more of a rock and roll record, like more of a just a punchy like with some warm bottom end and everything else. So he did a great job, and just like you like you said, it's the best sounding record we have uh, for sure. And you know, I would be remiss not to mention your your bandmates in this band, man. Why don't you just quickly mention who they are because. Uh, also, I mean, one of the big takeaways from the success of Bewitcher is your live shows and all of you three guys together throwing down hard Definitely. every night. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, we got, I mean, uh, Andy, uh, Andres Megas, as we call him, on bass, um, founding member, and then our uh, newest acquisition was uh, Eris Hunter on drums, and uh, that guy brings this, you know, just a slamming rock, you know, vibe, punk rock uh, yeah, yeah. energy to, the, to everything we do. You know, it's not... Not necessarily like faster, but it's way more aggressive, way more hard hitting. His right. snare drum will blow your eardrums out. <laughs> like it's it's the shit. And uh, he's been with us for like three years now, so well, almost more than that, I guess. Wow. So um, we're probably the most solid lineup we've ever had, and just feeling really good on stage. For everything's sure, go everything's going well. So yeah, it's resonating well with the people out there. Um, one of the things too that I wanted to mention, and you know, we've kind of seen, I guess, in the new millennium, you know, bands just for for, for financial reasons or just feasible to be more feasible have kind of been releasing eps and stuff like that you guys have been releasing full links yeah and it's like you know we have a lot of music we're gonna put it out to the fans and i think there's people old school people especially like me who who kind of love that stuff uh, why why did you guys always kind of choose to kind of do the full length when obviously you know the the opportunity to maybe do an ep uh was there because we're old school guys too man yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, we like full lengths and like yeah, we like full albums. Um, not that we're against EPs. I mean, we definitely do it, but it's for us. It's like it, it's always like a cycle. So like we get done with something, get done with an album, we tour behind it, and then I start writing songs, and then eventually like the, the goal is get enough together to do a full length album. Yeah. If we if, if if two years went by and I only had five or six songs, we do it. We do it. There's always <laughs> enough material to do a full length. So yeah. Yeah. Share a little bit about. Uh, I don't. I think we were, we didn't mention the fact that uh, uh, "Curse Be Thy Kingdom" um, came out on Century Media Records. How did the deal yeah. with Century Media come out come about? Um, they had been kind of following us around since uh, the first album, the first tour that we ever did. Um, I think we played down in like L.A. and uh, their A and R guy had uh, seen us right after Frost and Fire. I think uh, the second Frost and Fire, first one that we played, and um, they were just kind of like. You know, just kind of saying hi and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And eventually, up. eventually it just kind of blew up into a little, you know, hey, maybe we should work together. Yeah, cool. Yeah, we can swing something maybe. And then I think they offered us one contract. We weren't quite into it. So we went with another label. And then uh, for this record, it, it, it worked out. So it was beneficial for everybody. For so sure. We just went with it. And uh, honestly, you know, as far as everything went with the record, I can't say enough good things about how they released it and, and, and treated it. So it, it, it's been a beneficial relationship so far. Yeah, I mean, they have uh, released vinyl. Is all that gone, all that vinyl gone? Still, we, oh, we got vinyl. It, okay, it'll great. still be around, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna. That's the, that's the benefit of uh, having a major label is that they don't run out of anything. Good, good, yeah. So uh, I'm gonna see if I can pick one up tonight. Um, that's great. And obviously, uh, they've kind of also put some effort in uh, some of the video work, which is so important. Right. Uh, let's talk yeah. about that real quick. Uh, you guys released, I think, a visualizer and then three official videos for all of my favorite songs, too. I'm like, these dudes know what the fuck's up. Sometimes bands release videos. I'm like, that song's horrible. What about this other song? But uh, of course, you know, all the mystifier uh, did some great video work. 
Yeah, um, did you guys like enjoy doing the video? You like enjoy do, enjoy doing the videos? We had a couple of guys from Portland that are really good at uh, they they just do video production like nobody else. They hadn't never done a music video before us, and mm -hmm. so they were like movie guys. They were film guys, you know. So um, they took a chance. It was they were friends of Eris's, um, and they just did a phenomenal job with the Mystifier video, which is the first one. So we just did the next two with those guys, and uh, I should mention them. <laughs> you should. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, the, the name is escaping me of the production company, but yeah, um, yeah, Brandon and, uh, and, uh, and I remember, oh, God damn, I'm spacing it now. Wow. Okay. We'll uh, that's going to be bad. We'll, we'll edit it out. Yeah, we'll get, the, we'll get this in post. We'll get it right. <laughs> Sorry guys. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, but yeah, yeah, um, cool videos, do different con con uh, like concepts for, for all the songs and everything. And we kind of knew what the singles were going to be coming out of the gate. Right. So yeah. It Satanic worked. Magic Attack. It's just one of those tracks, uh, obviously the first single, great song, uh, very hooky, people love it, I mean, great track, but and then um, I also fell in love with Valley of the Ravens, and I thought the video for Valley was like cool, it was like this really played out theatrical type of visual video, it wasn't just the band jamming, it was really something thought out and cool, like there was a storyline, and I really dug that. Yeah, man, we were gonna do a completely different concept for the video, and then like I think with a, within a week or two of before shooting, like we changed the whole idea because we found <laughs> we saw another band doing the same thing that we yeah, were gonna yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like, all right, uh, change of plans, and came up with this. These guys came up with this like whole other like uh, storyline, and uh, just it just turned out really so cool. And, Super cool. Yeah. So all you people out there, don't forget we're talking about the band's latest release, "Cursed Be Thy Kingdom." out on Century Media Records. Be sure to look at the cover work right now and go after this interview and download it from iTunes or your favorite music media outlet. It is out there already. If you're not already jamming to Bewitcher, be sure to check them out. Now, uh, we have to talk about uh, the fact that you guys are road dogs, man. <laughs> have you guys stopped being on the road since last year sometime or no? Well, COVID put an end to those plans for a little while, you know. Um, but no, yeah. even after COVID, I mean, you guys have been consistently on the road yeah so since october we've uh we finally started touring again did the exhume tour that went into november of last year did a couple shows in uh down down in california in december and now we're just gonna ramp it up dude we're, we're like you, you you make it seem like seven months isn't a long time <laughs> seven months is a long time to be on the road well it's not it's not all in a row you yeah know? but you know you but know. still but yeah you're consistently being out on the road so uh correct me if i'm wrong this weekend were you in houston for the hell's he heroes fast or something hell's like that heroes yes. yeah how yeah. was that how did that come, come out amazing dude it was so good it was like, cool. we played the what first day did y'all play we played on friday okay yeah played the first one back in like 2018 and it was cool but this one was like i mean it was so insane it was so well attended the lineup was insane we got to do, you know, we had a cool slot, you know, second to last on the on the uh, small stage upstairs. So the room was packed. Just had a great time. And yeah. everybody was just in a good mood. First big fest that I think a lot of people in this area have been in, been to in years. Sure, so, sure. Fucking awesome, man. What yeah. can you say? Houston's cool, you know. Sometimes I get kind of, like, reluctant to go to Houston because I have a lot of toys and shit. I end up leaving there with, like, $30 in fucking tolls. <laughs> I feel the same way about the East Coast, man. <laughs> or Chicago. You can't fucking go anywhere without paying a toll. Exactly. <laughs> Um, correct me if I'm wrong too. Did you guys play Mexico last year? Nah, not yet. We're about to. They're though. about to play Mexico. Yeah, How man. excited are you about that? I, mean, I can't even. I can't even hide my excitement for that shit, dude. dude <laughs> they love evil shit in Mexico. Dude, they do, and it's. I know. They. I mean, we ran into like, I don't know, five, six people just at the Hell's Heroes Fest the other night from Mexico that are going to be at the show in Mexico City. Wow. <laughs> like we can't fucking wait. I'm like, me too. Yeah, it's going to be good. Wow. It's going to be good, man. That's going to be crazy. And bro. we get to play with our, uh, our, our fellow uh, Portlanders and unto others for that show. They just got announced. Oh, uh, really? Be a double bill. So it's going to be kick ass, man. Let's talk a little bit about what's going to transpire for the rest of 2022. I think you guys recently just announced a killer ass tour. Yeah, man, we got a couple things going on. Uh, June, uh, we're going to be out flying out, or not flying out, but probably going out to Syracuse uh, to start with a few dates with uh, Municipal Waste and uh, yeah. Integrity, which is going to be cool. Yeah. Uh, and then in August, we got uh, Goat Horde Incantation. We're going to be doing like a month in, these, in the States with those guys. So. The Vile Ascension be Tour, people. Ascension. Be sure to come out and support. Wow, that's killer. It's amazing, man. It's, it's feels feels pretty surreal at this point. Yeah. To uh, not only not only to continue to build your fan base but to kind of also build 
the relationships with all these other bands in the scene too, man, who are really kind of getting to know you. The cool thing is that we know a lot of them already, and ah. like we just kind of get to know them a little bit better, you know? Like, yeah. Get to spend that extra time. A little bro hanging, you know? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. I know how those dudes in Creeping Death roll. That's for sure. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> Let's Don't not go started. there. Don't get me started. I know. I know. Okay, a couple of... Couple of last questions, Matt, before I let you go. Yeah, uh, let's talk about um, new music. Are you already writing new music for the next record? Because yeah. it kind of seems like uh, Bewitcher kind of released it in the early beginnings, like every three years, now every two years, and I think next in 2023 might be time for a new record. Yeah, I don't put but it. But I was thinking, <laughs> Century Media is probably pushing these guys to release another record sooner than that. Is that true? You would think so, but they haven't really said anything about it. So I think they're just letting us do our thing, which is cool. Which is uh, what we need, because uh, yeah, we do have music. I mean, I've I've been writing pretty much this entire time since uh, the last record came out. So um, we'll have new songs after we get done with all the string of, of tours that we've been doing. Uh, I think the last part of the year we're gonna try to like just get some demos done, work on some new stuff. I'm not gonna give any like perspective times on like yeah, yeah, when yeah, a new sure. album's coming out or anything like that. But yeah, there's new stuff in the works for sure. For sure. And uh, once you guys make the decision to kind of release it, I'm sure it won't be too long after that. Well, you, you think you'll record with with the same guy or? That's another question. We're not exactly sure what's going on yeah. there yet. So it's very, very preliminary stages at this point. I honestly, you know, I, I've been working with bands for 25 years. I'd love to see you guys work with, with new people and to kind of add to the diversity and, and the beauty of what you guys are doing because I think you guys are so versatile in what you do that you could expand way more than, than I think than what you're doing. It just comes down to what the album demands, you know, like yeah, what, yeah. You, what, what the album needs and then you get the right guy for it and yeah. hopefully it works. Let's talk about really quick. I remember when I first heard about the band, I was like, Portland, Oregon, <laughs> the fuck is it? You know, we're way down here in Texas. So I'm like, we don't hear a lot about what's happening in, in, the, in the Northwest. So uh -huh. is, is, is the Portland metal scene something to be reckoned with? I would say the last 10 years, it's one of the main cities in America for, really? for the metal scene. Yeah, I mean, we had, a, wow. we had a really strong scene there for quite a long time. It's hard to say now because, I mean, shows have just come back recently, so it's it's hard to tell, like, what is really happening scene-wise. But And we're on the road so much, we don't play in Portland anymore. Right, so, right. I mean, it happens, like, a couple times a year. So, uh, But for, you, there's a lot of great bands coming out of there, for sure. Yeah, And obviously... I would think that the success that Bewitcher is seeing, obviously getting a label deal, like touring all over the country, um, has kind of inspired you know musicians in that scene. Maybe. I think so. <laughs> I don't know. I would think so. Um, I would. I would imagine so because I mean that's probably what inspired us at some point or another. For you sure. Know? For okay. sure. You know, uh, just meeting you behind the camera and talking to with you now, I can see what a kind of humble guy you are but i just want to tell you something before we end out man i just want to tell you i am a huge fan of yours i fucking love the way you sing and the way you play that fucking gibson v man it's it's insane to see you go up there and jam and i've seen you do it a couple of times i've seen videos and i think that you are like one of the up and coming guys in the national metal scene and i just want to say that on camera to you it means a lot man thank you i what can I, what can I say? <laughs> now, who who kind it's of awesome. inspired you in your playing? Because, like I said, I mean, you 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 can be thrashy, but yet you can be very bluesy with your solo stuff, and I really love that. And you have you also have a very signature tone that I've already come to recognize. Thanks, man. Yeah, I mean, it's just something I've been. I mean, I've been playing for a million years, so like, you eventually get to your own kind of sound. Eventually, um, I I love it. I love a lot of different kind of music. So like the the the, the best thing if you're playing guitar, if if you're wondering how to get your own sound or whatever, just listen to as much stuff as you can. And then just figure it out, like over, yeah. over time. You know what I mean? And that's that's all I can say because I don't, I don't, I, I can list my influences if you want me to, but it's gonna be a long fucking list. We're gonna be here for a long time, so I don't know. Yeah, I, I hear you. You can hear it if you pay attention. I, I, I definitely can hear it. Thank you so much, Matt, um, uh, for taking the time to talk with us and people around the world who watch our program. Any last words? Anything that I missed? Anything that you want to share with people who will watch this interview? Hey man, just for everybody in San Antonio and uh, greater Texas area, man, like thank you guys so much for the support that you've given us over the years. This is like one of my, one of my favorite places in the country to go to, to play shows. San Antonio is my favorite city in Texas. Don't tell anybody else that. <laughs> yeah. But officially, yeah. So thank you guys, and uh, we'll see you on the road. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Thank you so oh, yeah. much for talking with us. Remember everyone out there, 
The band has a brand new record out there, out there right now, Curse Be Thy Kingdom, out on Century Media Records. Be sure to pick it up after you watch this interview. You saw Bewitcher on Rob's Metal. Satanic magic, satanic magic. 